uh, they can't resist getting in on that game, either ideologically because they feel it is the right way to rebalance the economy, or cynically because, as Smitson Gonyama, uh, former or erstwhile director of communications for the ANC, said that he didn't take part in the struggle to be poor. So, however you frame it, the incentive I think is politically and ideologically quite clear. The Minister of Human Settlements, Mamoloko Kubai, says that community schemes, uh, now these include sectional title complexes, homeowners associations, retirement housing schemes, amongst others, need to be subject to mandatory, quote, economic transformation, uh, sort of BE, and a different variation thereof. Joining me to unpack this proposal and the possible implications thereof is Herman Pretorius. Herman is Head of Strategic Communications at the Institute of Race Relations. Herman, thanks very much for your time with us uh, this week. Let's just start a little bit with the sort of intentions maybe behind the minister's proposals, and then we will separate if there's a difference between intentions and possible outcomes. In terms of motivation, one uh, has to see this within a couple of contexts. Firstly, it's important to understand politically where we are, less than a year out from an election, uh, and the ANC has to have a political narrative going into that election. Uh, part of that narrative will most likely be the question of economic transformation. We have seen over the last year especially how the rhetoric of an untransformed economy has re-emerged as one of the, 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 the talking points within the ANC. Now, that might be politically coordinated, or it might just be you know, the, the, the ideological outflow of their diagnosis of the problem. But firstly, politically, they have an incentive to play to the idea of economic transformation. And it is in that sort of, from that perspective, that we are likely to see a few policy proposals. A few weeks ago, we saw uh, talk about the Reserve Bank and its approach to inflation being unsustainable and counter economic transformation. We have seen talk about um, JSE companies and the leadership of corporate South Africa management being uh, untransformed, according to the ANC. The Minister for Human Settlements, Minister Kubaya herself, I think, is someone with political ambitions. Uh, heading uh, into the last ANC elected conference, she was even mooted as a possible deputy president candidate. Now, it's interesting to know that within the ANC policy economics cluster um, of the party itself, she occupies the same position that Enoch Gorongwana once occupied, who is now minister of finance. So I think in her personal capacity, one sees political ambition here also playing into the fact that she is using her current portfolio as something of an ideological economic platform. We should also note that she did exactly the same when she was Minister of Tourism during COVID, when she pushed heavily for COVID support to the tourism industry to be based on race. So Minister Kubai has a very strong ideological brand of being uh, in favor of racial economic transformation. She has practiced it in almost every portfolio she has held. And I, I think that makes her even more dangerous, politically speaking. Looking ahead to the 2024 elections, she is, I think, becoming uh, one of the more credible cabinet ministers. She has few, you know, of the typical political baggage that might discredit her as a party campaigner. So that's the politics of it uh, taken. Then ideologically speaking, this might genuinely form part of the overall advance of state involvement in economic transformation. We look back at efforts like prescribed assets, we look back at the mining charter, expropriation without compensation as part of the reconfiguration of the agricultural uh, uh, sector and business. We look at the water licenses that have now been made subject or mooted to be made subject to racial uh, quotas systems. It all really either cynically 
or ideologically in good faith, form part, forms part and parcel of the ANC's transformation uh, push. And the development of this economy surrounding community schemes is, I think, an attractive place for the ANC to identify where trade is still happening, where there might even be an upward trajectory for commercial or economic activity. And of course, uh, they can't resist getting in on that game, either ideologically, because they feel it is the right way to rebalance the economy, or cynically, because as Smits and Gonyama, uh, former or erstwhile director of communications for the ANC, said that he didn't take part in the struggle to be poor. So however you frame it, the incentive, I think, is politically and ideologically quite clear. And Hanuman, just as a final question, the minister talked a little bit about increased urbanization, and more and more people moving towards urban centers, trying to find whatever sort of economic growth and job opportunities they can, given the policy climate that the ANC, to which the ANC has subjected South Africa. And she talks about you've got diverse uh, communities in, in sort of complexes, let's say complexes, sort of sectional title complexes, more diverse people of different backgrounds, religious, racial, et cetera. And that there's then this, I'm paraphrasing now, but then there's conflict and you need to resolve this and you need to handle this. And so assuming the premise and the argument is correct, that there is now when people from different races move in together, that they can't then resolve their problems uh, in their own way. How does giving, you know, sort of bureaucrats in Santon, let's take, you know, the example in Johannesburg, how would that help to alleviate those social tensions? In the spirit of trying to see the, the, the minister's mm. argument in the best possible sense, um, we saw a little uh, flavor of, of, uh, of the, the, the quote-unquote benefits of racial transformation uh, programs uh, through praise recently given, given to how the South African rugby team, the Springboks, have become world champions whilst pursuing transformation. Now, as as weak as I think that argument is, um, that is perhaps the the, the way of, of, of the minister or the government looking at the situation, that you can simply restructure the balance of forces within a society and thereby change the power hierarchy. And assuming that the power hierarchy and relations based on that hierarchy is the cause of societal tension. The situation, however, isn't I think, as, as, as we would agree on, and perhaps the, the, the listener too, is that that's not how attitudes break down, traditionally, if you look at the data. If you look at polling data in South Africa, whether it's from the IRR or other entities, and you break it down to see where you get groupings of opinion, it's mostly not racial. It's socioeconomic. On the question uh, of race uh, uh, and leadership of political parties, the South African middle class across all race groups, white, black, Indian, colored, had a much more shared attitude to whether the race of a leader matters to political success in South Africa than if you were to look at your poorer parts of society where poorer white South Africans, poorer black South Africans, colored, and Indian uh, of Indian descent coalesced around the idea that race does matter. So if Minister Kubai thinks that she can bring about societal coherence, um, then she might try and do so through finding commonality, not via the path of racial manipulation, but on the common ground of class aspirations. When you look at my the, the the suburb where I live, I have neighbors from all races. And when the power goes out in the WhatsApp group, it's impossible to tell the race of the person complaining. And when the power come back on, comes back on, it's impossible to tell the race of the people saying thank you. Because I live in a relatively secure suburban middle class area, the people around me, irrespective of race, share my socioeconomic aspirations. And that hasn't caused tension. In fact, quite the opposite. It has brought more common understanding between people of various race groups. So the minister might learn something 
from ordinary South Africans if she were to get out of her ideological bubble. Thank you very much for watching. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. A reminder, please, before you leave to like this video if you have not yet done so, and also please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Until next time, this has been Chris Hutton for the Center for Risk Analysis. Take care.